folks, forewarning, we are going to dive deep today. <laughs> All right. I want to get deep into these. I, I don't like to call them conspiracy theories because we were talking before air. You know, there's so many conspiracy theories that over time turn out to be true. So really, I, I don't know what you would call these things, but it's, it's not technically a theory because sometimes it's proven to be fact. So it's really just, I guess, a fancy guessing game at yep. this point. But uh, we were talking about Bob Lazar on y'all's podcast yeah, on the Sunday. other day. <clears throat> and uh, here recently, that's the guy that it seems to be like everybody looks to for the answers. You know, he kind of sparked up the whole UFO thing again, even though he's been talking about it since the 80s with the whole Netflix documentary and Joe Rogan podcast right. and everything. People have just been really into it. And I know that people would love to hear us talk about it. And we didn't get to dive uh, as far as I wanted to the other day, so I wanted to jump into that first thing. Whenever it comes to Bob Bazaar, is he somebody that y'all believe, or is there some holes in a story that y'all see? One hundred percent, I believe uh, Bob. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm on board with Bob. What story. what make what makes you think? Just I mean, <clears throat> when he came out in 1989 and he was saying all this stuff um, about the hand scanners that he would have to use, okay, and then the technology uh, came on you know, on a known basis years later. Mm -hmm. And he talked about element, element 115. 115. Yeah. And people were, were laughing and making fun of him. But then it was added to the element table. Element 115. Wasn't it like 2011? Yes. It was, yes. Yeah, something like that. And, and yeah. it was just as he described. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, I mean, based on those two facts right there. Yeah. Well, well, you, <clears throat> well, oh, sorry. <laughs> well what, what really gets me, see, uh, I, I'm a really big skeptic whenever it comes to UFOs. I want to believe so bad but i just think that there's a lot of people out there unfortunately that are full of it and just want their 15 minutes of fame and with some people you can kind of see that they're lying like I, I don't know it's just i like to think that i can i'm good at reading people yeah but with bob it just you don't see it like if he's a liar, then he's the best damn liar that i've ever seen yeah, in my absolutely. entire yeah, life absolutely. his story has been Point to point, he's never messed anything up about it since the 80s. Yeah. I mean, that that's 30 years going on now yeah. that he's been telling the same story, story. with a, a lot of times if somebody's lying about something, after a while they're, they'll start getting their facts wrong or sure. telling maybe, other versions. Exactly, exactly. With Bob, you haven't got anything like mm -hmm. that. <clears throat> and well, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. But uh, what was fascinating to me is uh, how they almost tried to rewipe this guy's history. Well, that, that's what I was going to say. That, that's that's another reason that I think that um, that he's telling us the truth. I mean, they can't they can't just come straight out and kill him. I mean, they, you know, yeah. I mean, the government's not going to kill him because the, the well, public I, has seen his face. They I think know. they would have if they if he didn't go on to uh, that guy's TV station yeah. there yeah. in Las Vegas. Exactly. They might just have absolutely. So, what's the next best thing? Discredit him and discredit him. They tried. They have. Wiped his entire education history gone. He, he didn't graduate from anywhere. He didn't go anywhere. He pretty much just appeared in life. Yeah. Uh, and then you have um, the fact that his um, nuclear hardware store is uh, he does not own a <laughs> hardware store is uh, is is raided quite frequently when he Very talks frequently. when he talks about uh, element one fifteen. Um, I one hundred percent believe that he's telling the truth. I believe that. The government knows he's telling the truth, and they're that's they're keeping very very close tabs on him. See, see, one uh, whenever it comes to wiping out his history, a lot of people would already jump on that and say, "Well, there's the proof right there." They would have to have records if he really did. Well, uh, and people can go watch the documentary that <clears throat> they released on Netflix, and even the podcast that Joe Rogan done, but. Some of the facts that they'll find in that is uh, whenever he's talking about how he worked at Los Alamos, the uh, what, what was it a uh, it was like a national security lab, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Very, it was very important lab that worked on weapon development, and uh, he said that he worked at Los Alamos. At Los Alamos never had any record of him apparently, but his name was still on the manifest there. Yes. At Los Alamos. Yes. So how do you not work there and your name is on the manifest, exactly. but they don't have any records of you? And uh, 
then there was a uh, another school that they said that he went to that didn't have any record of him. But MIT. then there was the the uh, newspaper article. It was MIT, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they had the newspaper article that had his name on the students at this school yeah. that graduated. So I mean. Yeah, that they they got the proof right there, and that's the only two incidences that I'm aware of that uh, they've been able to prove his education background. Yet you can't find any record of it. Well, so that's, that's really weird. Yes. Yeah. Let, let me ask you a question. Now, we're talking about wiping people's history. Um, do you think it's harder to do it in the '80s, or do you think it'll be harder to do it now with everyone with social it, media? Be a lot it would, it would have been harder, be harder to do it now. It'd yeah. be harder now. Yeah. See, see, that's why I even think that you have well, every, so many cases popping up. Everything is linked, and networks and, and things. I mean, wouldn't it be easier now than it would? Yeah, then? but you know, you've got social media, so many social media platforms. Yeah, you know, it would be so hard to yeah. to do mm-hmm. that now. Yeah, that that's to, in my opinion, and we'll jump into this um, as the podcast goes along. But I think that that's why the Pentagon last year had to come out and Just verify from, yeah. those videos yeah. because they and, were everywhere on the internet. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the internet has been an unstoppable force for whenever it comes to so called conspiracy theories because Definitely. there's all types of information now that people can find out. Like even the CIA releases stuff every now and then. They don't tell you a lot. But they'll release some mm-hmm. interesting documents on their website sometimes, and it's oh, all because sure. of the internet. But but whenever it comes to Bob Lazar, see, I, I'm right there with y'all. Like, I think that he's telling the truth because there's how. First off, like, how do you know about the test flights? You know, for the people that are unaware of Bob Lazar's story, he and a few friends, I forget how many times they went out there, but a few times he brought them to uh, basically right beside what is now Area 51. And there was no Area 51 before Bob Lazar, which is another cool, fun fact. He's the one that brought all the attention to that. But uh, he would show all these test flights that they'd be doing, and that's how he got busted and yada yada. How do you know about the time and the day of certain test flights at a top-secret base that nobody even knew about at the time? Exactly. It's weird. It's very weird, very weird. I think Bob, you know, he's 100% telling the truth. There's just been too many things that he said in 1989 that have came to pass. Yeah. You know, even you you were talking about the uh, videos that, that the U.S. government put out last well, April. It was in April, yeah. And mm-hmm. one of those was just like Bob Lazar uh, described and drew a picture of in that documentary. The mm-hmm. rotating one? Yes. Yes. So, you know, I mean, there's just so... And not to, I mean, let me see where I'm going here. When they put those out, it seemed like a lot of people didn't really pay attention or they didn't really care. And we've talked about this on our show. That could have been uh, disclosure for the U.S. government. But nobody, not, nobody, nobody cared. I mean, it was, they could, people could not have cared less about it at the time. And it's it's crazy to me. I mean, yeah. COVID was, was yeah, gearing up but, at that yeah. time, and it may have been a distraction, but I don't think so. I mean, you put out we've been we've been craving disclosure for decades, and all of a sudden they're like, oh hey, here's three videos. Here's three videos that did yes. actually happen, and they're not from here. Yeah. And people well, are just like, man. Well, see that that's the thing that uh, really gets me about whenever it comes to UFOs and stuff. And that was another question I wanted to ask y'all. Whenever it comes to Bob Lazar and the uh, supposed craft that. He worked on. Do you think that is otherworldly, or is there a possibility that it might just be top secret military stuff that really smart humans have engineered? I think you. Uh, was, That's a good question. Um, I think it was otherworldly. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think there was an otherworldly craft at that facility. Yes, for sure. Um, but I also think that there was reversed engineered. Human right. crafts there as right. well, you, you know, know, and when we've talked on the show, I think a lot of sightings today could be uh, UFO crafts that are man-made. Mm-hmm. That you know, we have got that technology, and we have uh, reverse engineered it, and mm-hmm. that's what people are seeing. Mm-hmm. There was two big crashes, you know, Roswell obviously, and then um, the uh, Dark Forest crash was what in the late nineteen thirties, yeah, thirty six, uh, Nazi Germany. Mm-hmm. And you know they supposedly recovered a craft there. Was that the acorn looking one? Was no, no, no. Okay. that yeah. this this one 
uh, the acorn one came after this. Okay. The problem, the problem is, I don't really think there was ever a description of that craft, and the reason, because this is right around the time that you know, Nazi Germany is coming to power, and they're controlling a lot of information coming out that's that the public can't have, that that the world can't see. You know, they're they're putting a lockdown on a lot of media outlets, so you can't. Mm-hmm. That there's not a lot to go on as far as anything on the Black Forest incident. Yeah. And see, so that's the, that's one thing that's always bugged me whenever it comes to UFOs is just the lack of information mm-hmm. and the lack of just facts to even prove it. That's why whenever it comes to Bob Lazar's story, I want to believe him so bad <laughs> because it seems like that's going to be our only hope to somebody getting that close to whatever that is and actually living to be able to tell us about it. Definitely. 